Hello, this is the next video in a playlist I'm calling Parameter Estimation, and we're going to cover Basu's Theorem. Let X be distributed with F, and T be a complete sufficient statistic for theta, where T is distributed with some density or distribution H. Now, if V is a statistic, as in, and in ciliary, then V is independent of T. So let's let V given T be distributed with some distribution K, so V of K, you know, or V given theta. But we can just think of it as of K of V. It's independent of theta because V is ancillary. So note that V given T, remember this was V given theta, V given T is distributed with some distribution K, so V given T and theta, but since t is sufficient, it's independent of theta. So it's, it's independent of theta because t is sufficient. Now, since t is complete, if we have if we, the expected value of some function of t is equal to zero for all theta, then the function g of t is equal to zero for all theta almost everywhere. Now, for a fixed v, so that's like a little uh, subscript v such that it's a realization of our random variable b, we're going to define a function of t, and we're going to call it psi. So psi of t given v. We're going to let it be this function here, k of v. Now remember, k is the, is the distribution of v, and this is going to be k given t. Now let's look at its expected value, expected value of psi, so plug in what it is here, and it's a linear operator, so we take it into each. The expectation is in regards to t, and there's no t here, so that's constant, just comes down. And this is a, a random variable of t, so we take whatever's in that expected value times the density of t, because it's a random variable, you know, it's a function of t, integrated all over possible values of t. Now this is a conditional density or distribution, so we can take the intersection divided by the marginal, and then those cancel, and we're left with this. But here, this is a joint distribution, and we're integrating out all possible values of t. So what's left is k of v, right? k of v given theta, but v is an ancillary, so it's just really k of v. So we get k of v, minus k of v, which is zero, and this is almost, you know, this is all theta almost everywhere. Now, since t is complete, right, this expected equals zero, that means this function is zero almost everywhere, you know, for all theta almost everywhere. So that says that these equal, right? So if this is this is psi and it equals zero, so set this to zero, take that to the other side, then these equal. But this is a conditional v given t equals just the density of v. That says that v and t are independent. And that's what we wanted to show. Now the next theorem, let x be distributed with f. i equals 1 to n. The parameter lives in the parameter space omega. Let t be a sufficient statistic for theta. Um, let t live in the sample space capital S and t be distributed with some function g, where uh, the sample space does not depend upon theta. Let v be a statistic such that v is independent of t, then v is ancillary. So here's the proof. So let's look at the distribution of v given t. So that's f of v given t, you know, and theta lives, you know, it's part of it. But since t is sufficient, this is independent of theta. So really we can think of it like this. Now it's independent of theta by sufficiency, right? T is sufficient. Now let's look at this, uh, these two, this product of functions here. Now this is a, a conditional, so it can be thought of as the intersection divided by the marginal, and that's what this is. So those um, are divided, you know, cancel, and we're left with this. But by assumption, v and t are independent, so we can break that apart, and that's what we get here. But then we can divide 
both sides. So that implies that these two are equal. Which, since t is sufficient, this is independent of theta. So that means this is independent of theta, which is independent of theta. So thus, v is ancillary. And that's what we wanted to show. Well, to keep the video at the right length, we're going to stop here. And in the next video, we're going to look at examples using Vasu's theorem. So hopefully you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.